This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simple Man's Comics, and this is the three up three down where we're covering this comic book market trends for the week jack it's been a busy week we had a great new podcast last night but we'll get into that in just a little bit how's your week going so far uh, it's going well you know all things considered obviously a lot going on in our country right now but that's why we hope to give you a break from all of that and uh get into the hobby we love and talk about some comics with the uh, three trends rising upward and three trends on the decline so we're gonna start with the right now and the uptrend with Miles Morales has been a lot of talk, a lot of chatter. A lot of people are sharing sold listings for Ultimate Fallout 4 and other issues of Miles Morales. There's no doubt this is definitely one that's heating up. Yeah, Miles Morales is really hitting that blue chip category as far as like key characters, key appearances, key issues that really I think are going to be books that um, almost, you know, you can talk about Mount Rushmore books of modern comics. Um, you know, the, these are... This is a, a mega, mega, mega key. And as much as it's going for and as much growth as we've seen, we really don't know what the ceiling for this book is. And that's the beauty of it. Because, you know, essentially, Miles Morales is Spider-Man, right? I mean, he is, that is who he is, obviously, right? It's in the name. It's, it's, it's pretty obvious. But the thing is, you can't accessibly buy Spider-Man's first appearance. You can buy Miles Morales' version. And unlike a lot of these kind of like next generation versions of characters, this one we know we actually have a chance of seeing. And with so much going on in our country, there's such a demand for diverse characters showing up. And Miles being such an organically created character coming from the ultimate universe, reaching like an iconic level of popularity at such a, a, a kind of quick and early stage and this is a character that i think we're going to see more and more of as far as media i think into the spider verse is only the beginning of it as far as the animated feature i think we're going to see him in a live action feature soon there's a lot of people talking about and we've talked about it on the channel a possibility of sony selling their uh movie franchises and, and their entire movie production over to disney of course that would unite the the sony verse and the mcu which would only do more to raise the stock of Miles Morales. I think it's one of those things where we see books, Brian, that tend to price out of reach of a lot of collectors. This is a book being the first appearance, Ultimate Fallout 4. It's headed in that direction. I think that that second print that we talked about in our top 10 and our, our, our buy list show, uh, you know, those, those top 10 shows that we're bringing to you with meat left on the bone. If you would have bought that Miles Morales second print with the white cover, the Pacelli variant, it certainly would you would have made money already based on where it is right now. That book's been a hot book moving, um, you know. So stick to those first and second prints. Check, make sure you're checking for that variant. Of course, you know that incentive variant is insane, but avoid those silly previews issues. Yeah, and all the points that you mentioned, as well as once you start hearing more news, more plot, more storyline, more characters for that mm -hmm. second Spider Verse movie, that's only going to add more fuel to the fire as well. Yeah, yeah. Next one we're going to talk about in 3UP this week is Stargirl. We're not talking about the Disney Plus show. We're talking about the DC Universe show, right? Right, and while the DC Universe app in and of itself may not be a raving success, this show is. And uh, much like Swamp Thing, this is getting critical acclaim. And unlike Swamp Thing, we're not getting an early season cancel. So we actually have something to believe in here. And even if you're not on board with the DC Universe app, um, there is hope that we may see this on CW at, at some point, similar to the way Swamp Thing did, or on HBO Max. This show is, of course, written and created by Jeff Johns, who at one point was the top dog at DC Comics. This is a very near and dear to his heart project because this is a character that's based on his late sister. Um, Stargirl's first appearance coming in that Stars and Stripes number zero has been an in-demand book because it's kind of like one of those like everything matches up. It's low print. It's, it's a very clear first appearance. She's featured on the cover. Um, and it's been a book that's been tough to find, but when you do, um, you can usually make a good flip on it. But we've seen of late some variants 
kind of draw attention in the market. Specifically, one in particular, a Superman incentive has kind of taken off from the new 52, but there's some undervalued other ones. Uh, Justice League United, they have a, a bombshells variant that features her on the cover. There's a selfie variant that features her and Wonder Woman and I think another character. Um, and I think these could definitely take off as well. Now, it's not incentives, but you're talking about books right now that are in dollar bins, $2 books. And with a character like Stargirl, there isn't a ton out there for people to chase. So after they grab that first appearance, they're going to look for the next best thing. So I would be on the lookout for these variants now. Yeah, and also with the hype that they're getting for Stargirl, they're also saying that they're going to try to introduce more JSA characters as the, oh, yeah. as the shows go, right? So you never know what you might get out of that. Yeah, unlike a lot of DC television shows, it looks like they've got the green light to like bring in any and all characters from this portion of the DC universe. And you've got some big name actors involved with this series like Owen Wilson. So I think there's a lot, a lot to be hopeful for with these characters and this show in general. Yep. Then the last one we're talking about in the three up portion for this week, we just had a podcast aired on the channel last night. It's also available in the audio version, but we had Kevin from Frankie's comics on there with us. Heck of a great, we talked all about the retail exclusive process lessons learned. He gave some advice, but there's no doubt Frankie's comics deserves to be, on the three up portion right now yeah and you know a detractor could say well you guys are putting him on the up portion that's a channel sponsor no doubt and because he's a channel sponsor that's why we can do this because the reality is a lot of other channels would not do this wouldn't give frankie's comics the recognition that they deserve for some of the fantastic achievements they've got going on right now within comics we talked about this on the podcast and how difficult it is and how so many different companies are doing this you know, even had a detractor in the comments saying, well, everybody makes a store variant now. Well, that's the point. If everybody makes a store variant now, then you got to give credit to those who are doing it at a different level. Frankie's Comics had that uh, Star Wars uh, Clone Wars Adventures number one, Peach Momoko Yoda variant. That was only available to their Facebook group. Not to open group, anyone can join. And we encourage everybody out there in the Simpleman's Comics YouTube family Please go sign up, join that club, because let me tell you something. Not only are you going to get access to books like that and like the upcoming Star Wars Adventures number 32 Ray Peach Momoko variant cover, but you're also going to be able to participate in things like they're doing another Peach Momoko cover and they're letting the community vote on which character they want on the cover out of the characters that Lucasfilm was able to to approve and that's the other thing you also get inside information from kevin himself about the process of selecting these variants what characters like lucasfilm would approve and which ones they wouldn't a lot of characters that a lot of people would want to see on these covers lucasfilm wouldn't allow to happen so you get so much from that facebook group on top of it as kevin mentioned on the podcast all members of the group get a code for free shipping within the united states I mean, that's a value right there in and of itself. On top of which, this book that they created, this, this, this Yoda variant, initially sold for $20, selling on the secondary market for as high as $80 to $100, smash success on the secondary market. They're continuing to work with Peach Momoko, as we mentioned with Star Wars, but that's not all, Brian. We mentioned it on the podcast last night that he's doing a special Thor variant. We have that art to unveil right here today don't we brian yeah we're putting it up on the screen right now it is a nice little homage cover very different from the typical peach momoko stuff you see i know brian sometimes in the past you haven't necessarily liked her art style i think this one yeah this one's a little different so you get the homage you've got thor 337 here um you know definitely the first appearance of better ray bills hot book book that's been on people's uh, you know, want lists lately. And we're getting Black Winter on the cover. So I think a lot for people to be excited about here with this, with this issue. And, you know, things like that are going to continue to make Frankie's comics make the new, make news and uh, get the attention of collectors, speculators, investors alike. If YouTube channels and publications aren't going to give them the love, then we will make sure we do that here on Simpleman's Comics. Definitely, definitely. And that's the three-up portion for this week. We're going to transition right now into the down portion, starting with that little Daredevil character, right? Vigil. 
Yeah, we got to talk about this. So I regularly get DMs and messages from you guys out there in the community looking for advice on various characters. And around the time that the most recent spike of Daredevil 610, the second print, which is the second appearance of Vigil and the first cover of Vigil. Um, now, this book is sitting right now at between like 80 and $125, depending. Um, people started to ask me, is this character coming back? Is this a character that we should start buying? And you start to see volume of the first appearances move. Now, the book's only selling for a few dollars over cover, but you're seeing people buying into this. And Brian, this flies in the face of one of the very principles that we have tried to talk to our community about, which is you got to read the comics. You have to read them because it is essential to being able to speculate on future events. And, and it helps you to avoid some of the negatives that Brian highlighted in our brand new ebook, talking about avoiding FOMO and chasing. And that's what I think is happening right now with this book, because what do we know about this character from Daredevil, Brian? It seems like a lot of people don't. Yeah, wasn't it all just a dream, Jack? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. So this character is cool, right? I don't deny it. The character looks cool. But it was all a dream in Matt Murdock's head. This, this run and this, this storyline played out very cinematically. If I was watching a movie and the big bad got revealed and you pull the hood off and it's Matt Murdock's face and Matt Murdock's looking at himself and at that moment he wakes up in the hospital, that'd be a great movie. But for comic collectors, especially ones who had been investing heavily the previous two months, this was the talk of the speculation community um, in this character. Boy, did they feel burned. But it seems like sometime later, this is one that we'd rather sweep under the rug rather than talk about. But I'm not going to say that they can't bring Vigil back and do something with this character and this character design, but it would have to be a new character. It would have to be a different person under the Vigil robe which would in turn make a new first appearance. So I don't know and that Vigil really is an investable character at all. And I think people buying that second print of the first cover are absolutely nuts. It's a beautiful cover, but to pay that kind of price, buy what you like by all means. But I think a lot of people are buying it because it's the hot book. And I would caution against that and say, please read the comics. You can do so much for yourself in doing that. Yeah, and with that, we're moving into the next one on three down. We're talking about Rogo Czar. This is another one that was like super popular not too long ago, right? Right, yeah. And it's one of those things like we can't call out a Marvel character without calling out a DC character. Now, this one is more of a buying opportunity. And, you know, we like to highlight those on the three down portion of this, this list in this show. But this was a character that rolled out with the Action Comics 1000 release, the, the highly anticipated Brian Michael Bendis story. And this was supposed to be the big bad villain that was Brian Michael Bendis's baby. But here we've gone a ways into Rebirth. And where is Rogel Czar now? Why are we not hearing about this character? And if you remember, he was on the cover of the Jim Lee tour variant that was sold when Jim Lee would do uh, you know, signings places and was most accessible to most of us on Midtown Comics and TFAW. And it's one of those things where that book got up to about $150 at one point. It's now trading in the mid 20s. Um, Frankie's Comics did a, a Superman cover where they put Rogozar on the cover. Um, awesome Matina. Uh, you know, close-up shot. I think that book is still available right now at frankiescomics.com. These were books that were like heavily talked about when they came out because a lot of people said, this is going to be the next big bad. This is going to be the next doomsday. This is going to be the next dark side. And if that's the case, these books being, you know, those early cover appearances, early variant, uh, um, that first appearance, especially on a book like Action Comics 1000 with a huge print run. So you got to be discerning about which cover would be the one to get. Um, those two books, that Matina Superman book, and then the first appearance, the Jim Lee tour variant seem to be the go-to books, but the market has softened on those. And I, I really just think it's a lack of use for the character. So this different from Vigil is a character where I say, I would imagine this character could come back and these books would, un would certainly spike. Um, so we'll have to wait and see on, on news for that. But 
if this is something that I haven't heard people talk about in a long time. So it's something we wanted to bring to light because again, the beauty of the down portion is there's always buying opportunity. Buy low, sell high. Yeah, I definitely like the buying opportunity with this, especially when you're talking about Bendis there, because we all know in his heyday, he's like the master of the slow burn. And you never know what might happen. And the way things get retcon nowadays, or I won't even say retcon, but as the cycle comes back around and they reach back and bring characters into new storylines, you never know what may happen. So it's cheap. I'd pick it up for sure. Then the last one we're going to talk about on the three down portion this week is Valiant Comics. I just saw Jack cringe a little bit there, but why is this down, Jack? Well, really, you got to isolate this. Um, the Valiant Comics longtime detractors are going to want to point to the Bloodshot movie, but I would say that that has nothing to do with it. Bloodshot, by all accounts, is really a smashing success. It was number one video on demand uh, film for a number of weeks. It beat a lot of, of movies like Jumanji um, that a lot of people thought it had no chance of beating. Um, it seems to be the test case for these types of movies that maybe aren't going to draw crazy critical acclaim or huge box office draws to be shown in this format. Um, also, it had a small budget, so it wasn't one that needed to hit this huge number in order to be profitable and sustainable. Um, and the reviews for it initially from critics were not good, but the reviews from fans were actually very good. So the film really isn't, it, sh it shouldn't be any sort of detraction on the company and isn't. What is the problem is what's going on on the publishing side. Um, Valiant, their new comics are failing at all accounts and all accords to really penetrate the market. And they do so much right. Those like high ratio, unique variants that they do from the flock to the glass to the, to the carbon fiber. Those are amazing. Um, their characters in and of themselves are incredible. This isn't a reflection really on the vintage Valiant first appearances. Those key issues of characters like Exo Manowar, who we know we've, has been teased by John Cena or, um, you know, Bloodshot or any of those Harbinger, Faith, those kind of characters. It's really the fact that the company isn't growing. Their, their editor, uh, Robert Myers, left. He's now at Omni Press. Wasn't much news about that. They just don't seem to have a passionate leader at the helm the way they did with Dinesh Shambhasani. And without somebody like really steering the ship in this really like difficult comic book world, they're not an independent pu publisher. They really, in, in essence, they're competing with Marvel and DC because they're a true superhero universe. And they're not even coming close to competing. So it, it really comes off like the wrestling business where it's like, you've got Marvel is WWE, DC's AEW. I, if I look at, uh, you know, Valiant, I'm like, man, you know, you're, you're almost like a local promotion. So what are they going to do to get going? Um, that is the difficult thing that I see because it isn't from the lack of quality product, quality writers, quality artists, um, quality characters. Anyone who's negative about the company has never actually read anything by Valiant. So that's the problem is it, it, it's the, it's gotta be the way the corporate, the marketing, um, the company being owned by uh, Sony DMG and really being farmed out to a Chinese film company. I just think the whole thing was a disaster. I would love to see somebody new by Valiant or license the characters. Could you imagine, Brian, what IDW or Boom could do with the Valiant universe? Yeah, you mentioned like if, say, like one of the big two were to maybe pick some of those up. I think there'd be a, a, a purge of some of it because there's some redundancy in care. Mm -hmm. Not complete redundancy. I mean, and I'm, I'll fully admit I'm like a Valiant noob. I've read some titles, but I will say one thing. When you talked about the Bloodshot movie, Talked about that. I went into it with low expectations. I was actually really excited about it. Really enjoyed it. In fact, once I saw Guy Pearce in it, I was, I was super excited, especially as the villain. And I think that movie was much more enjoyable than a movie that broke box office records on release. And that was another one with Guy Pearce in it. And that was Iron Man 3. Bloodshot to me is way better than Iron Man 3. That's about what I'll say about it, and if you haven't watched it, at least give it a chance. Just don't go into it expecting too much. If you expect an entertaining popcorn movie, I think you'll enjoy it. That's what, how I approached it and definitely enjoyed it that way. Yeah, definitely 90s action, uh, you know, if you're nostalgic for those types of movies. Yeah, like Universal Soldier. and 
Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because people use those comparisons negatively, but I, that, I, I really believe that that's the feel they're going for. And look at what '80s and '90s nostalgia um, is doing right now in the marketplace. So I think that there is a a lane for that, and I hope we get a, a Bloodshot Two film, a Zenoscope Faith cosplay variant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that hasn't been done already. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> but there it is, guys. That's the three up, three down. Also, make sure you comment. Let us know what you think of the list. We are putting comments up from last week's video up on the screen right now. So what do you think's hot? What do you think's cool? What do you think of our list that we have? Uh, we, like we say, there are some buying opportunities there on the down. And there's some great stuff on the up. It's just, you know, some of that being up, sometimes you might want to but yeah, buy what you like and also make sure you join that Frankie's Facebook group that we were talking about because there's a lot of good stuff going on there. And all you got to do is answer a couple questions so that he knows that you're actually a comic fan because like he said on the podcast, someone went in there and tried to sell a lawnmower. But either way, that's our show for you this time. This is Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.